Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you've been doing really well. Recently, I came down to California to be home for Thanksgiving. And over the last week, I've been having a lot of fun playing around with some different action cameras on my local trails. And I thought it might be kind of a fun video to share some of my insights from over the years and make a little buyer's guide before the holidays. But I think one of the things that keeps getting lost in tech videos and reviews like this is to be realistic about the goals of getting an action camera in the first place. When the original GoPro Hero came out in 2004, it was essentially a waterproof film camera that allowed you to share little moments with your friends and family. Now fast forward 20 years and we have digital cameras capable of shooting stabilized high def 4K video that can instantly be distributed to the entire world on social media. In recent years, companies like DJI and Insta360 have really challenged GoPro's hold on the market. However, with so many new cameras coming out each year, it can be really easy to feel like you're kind of getting left behind and maybe get a little bit of tech envy. This is where I think you can get lost in the weeds a little bit when talking about tech. Some of the most iconic mountain bike moments of all time have been filmed on a shaky GoPro 5 or 4. And you rarely ever see a comment in those videos complaining about the quality. It's always important to remember that the moment is what's important and finding a camera that allows you to capture the moment with the fewest headaches is key in my book. A good example of this in action today is a YouTuber named Peter Santanello who I watch all the time and he consistently gets millions and millions of views sharing his experiences to the world with a GoPro 8. It goes to show you don't always need the latest and greatest to make good content. With all these various types of users, it's really tough to design the perfect camera. If you stuff all the features possible into something, it can get too bulky, heavy, or expensive for the casual user. And then if you strip something down too much, it can be underwhelming for the professionals. And in this guide, I just wanna go over some of the pros and cons of all the different cameras that I know of. So first, let's start with the flagship model, which is focused on quality first and foremost. I think ultimately you can't go wrong with any of these flagship models. They all shoot, at the very least, really nice stabilized 4K footage, which is plenty for shared content. They also have great apps to edit, download, and share your content on your phone. And they all have some little pros and cons that separate them. The GoPro and the Action 4 are both around $400, and the Ace Pro is gonna be around $450. The new Ace Pro is the most expensive and has the highest resolution. It also has a cool flip screen and a really nice magnetic mount, which is awesome. But it doesn't have a replaceable lens. And it's the heaviest camera at 180 grams, which could be a deal breaker if you're gonna mount it on your helmet, especially if you have a half shell. Then in comparison, the GoPro 12, which has great stabilization, it has a really tall eight over seven sensor. It has additional lenses that you can change the field of view with. It has 5.3K footage but it has the slowest interface, it has no front touch screen, it has the worst mounting system, and it has a mediocre microphone in my opinion. And then the Action 4 is the lightest flagship model at 145 grams. It has the best battery life, it has the best user interface, the best microphone, a magnetic mounting system, replaceable lenses, and it never overheats, but the quality is just a little bit off of the GoPro 12 in my opinion, as well as the stabilization. However, to be fair, the difference in quality these days is so close, especially after it undergoes compression to be uploaded on social media. So here's an example of side-by-side -side comparison of the Action 4 and the GoPro 12, and let me know if you can see a huge difference. So this one's going to be fun because I have my remote here. So this is GPS remote. It's going to overlay GPS data to the camera. I'm excited to use the GPS and see how it goes. So let's see the difference between uh, Action 3 and Action 4 and GoPro, all that good stuff. As you can see, what I'm trying to get at here is that there is really no such thing as a perfect camera. I think personally for me, the thing I prioritize over everything is the least headaches possible. So if a camera is gonna be overheating or if it's gonna be buggy or if it's gonna have bad battery life, anything like that that can get in the way of actually capturing the moment you wanna capture is a deal breaker for me. So personally, I've been having a lot of fun using the Action 4 
However, like I said, all of these would be great and I think all of them have different pros and cons and it's just about understanding what are the negatives of each one and seeing if that's a deal breaker for you. I think one of the most exciting advances in the last few years is actually the comeback of some smaller, lighter weight cameras like the Osmo Action 2 and the Insta360 GO 3. These have some major compromises but also some major advantages which we can get into. Lately, the Action 2 has actually become one of my favorite cameras to bring along and capture memories with. Whether it's going to the skate park with my friends or up in the hills on my own, the size and portability of this allows me to get really creative and have some fun shots that I've never gotten before. The nicest thing I've found as well is that with it being so lightweight, I can just put it on a bite mount and film my favorite downhill trails even if I have a half shell without the need for bringing a chest strap or having my helmet bounce around. So that's been really fun. The main drawback of these smaller cameras is a slight sacrifice in quality. So here's a comparison of the Action 2 and the Action 4. And even though the Action 2 does film 4K, I will have to say it does not look quite as nice as the flagship Action 4 footage. I can already feel a big difference actually. Oh, with my head. My gosh. <laughs> and then on the other hand, the Insta360 GO 3 tops out at 2.7K. And in the head-to-head -head comparisons that I watched, the Action 2 tends to come out on top, although the GO 3 is a little bit lighter and a little bit more portable. The other thing that makes these a little bit less appealing to professional users is the internal memory storage. The GO 3 tops out at 128 gigabytes for $429, while the $299 Action 2 comes with 32 gigabytes of storage. However, with the additional module, the power module or the screen module, you can add in external memory cards like any flagship camera, albeit at a bigger form factor. However, it does have a really cool setting where you can easily port the internally storage footage over to the SD card in a matter of minutes. I've used this feature a lot on bigger days where I might climb up to the top of long downhill, film the downhill on the internal storage, connect these together, port the footage over, throw it in my backpack, and then it'll be all ready to go by the time I get to the next trail. The main major drawback of the Action 2 is that it does not have a replaceable lens, and I've heard that it overheats in the summer, but I have not experienced that yet. To be fair though, I will say that I am much more aware of what I'm filming and how long the clip is gonna be when I'm using this camera, and so I don't think I would use this to film an entire day like we would on our YouTube channel from time to time with a GoPro. I think this would be more for doing little downhill sections or creative clips along the way and creating little things you can share on social media pretty easily. While the GO 3 on the other hand does have a replaceable lens, it's much more expensive than the Action 2 and the camera module itself does not have a screen on it, but the Action Pod does link wirelessly so you can preview your shot. But it's just one more thing to keep in mind. I honestly think for most people who just wanna capture little clips for social media, these smaller, lighter cameras are a great option. And if I was still doing a lot of racing, this is what I would bring 100% because it's so easy to integrate into what you're doing. It's been a completely different experience when bringing this along. And I've really enjoyed the ability to put it in unique places and come up with different shots. It also feels a lot less intrusive when you're using it in a place with other people. And I think that the smaller size lets people feel a little bit more at ease around the camera, which is really nice for just getting authentic interactions or making your friends feel less like they're on camera getting ready to get filmed and put on YouTube, which is usually what's happening. <laughs> and finally, the other major bonus, at least in the case of Action 2, is that you can save a lot of money over the bigger flagship cameras. So they've been on sale pretty consistently for $279. And recently I just saw them as low as $239, which is like a little bit more than half of the price of the Ace Pro. If you wanna save a little money, this is a great way to do it. And finally, we get to the other option, which everyone has, which is to find a recent generation camera like the GoPro 10, 11, or even the Action 3, which gives you all the benefits of the flagship models, bigger battery life, better storage, all of that stuff but with maybe some reduced quality or some limitations with software. However, it's gonna be at a lot cheaper price. You can always find these on sale. And there are still really big YouTubers I know who create great videos that lots of people watch using a GoPro 7 with a gimbal. So you don't always need the latest and greatest to just make good content. With that being said though, I do think that one of the biggest improvements in the last two generations of action cameras has been the audio quality. And so I think if you were to do a head-to-head -head comparison with the Action 3 and the Action 4, you would immediately notice the audio quality, but someone may not immediately notice the image quality difference.
<laughs> there you go, okay. Oh my gosh. So I would say if you are gonna pick up an older camera, at the very least you should be using a wind slayer, which is like a little foam attachment that goes over the camera to help with the audio. Or if you can find something that's USB-C compatible, like the Action 3, so then you can record with a separate microphone like what I'm using right now, I think that will go a long way in creating really great footage and kind of making the headaches of bad audio go away. I can't tell you how many hours I've spent editing trying to fix bad audio from action cameras. And I've never really had to worry about like, oh man, the video quality needs to get touched up a bit. It's almost always the audio that gives me headaches. So with all that being said, I know this was a lot of information. At the end of the day, the thing to keep in mind is that the story is king and it will always win out over the technology you're using. The latest and greatest tech does make it really helpful in reducing the amount of headaches associated with capturing your adventures, but the camera itself is so much less important than the moment being captured. My personal go-to setup for the last few months has been the Action 4 ever since it came out. Um, I used GoPros for many years, and I've just found this to be a lot easier to use from a interface standpoint. The software is better, the front screen is really good. I don't have to worry about bringing a lot of accessories or extra batteries to make it last for a whole day. It just really makes it easy to capture great footage and get the moment that I want to capture captured. I am really curious about trying to Go 3 as well. I haven't gotten to try that, but they look really cool, and I've had so much fun using the Action 2 lately. But again, I myself get caught up in the technology race from time to time, and I just need to remember to get outside, make some fun memories, and just go ride. I hope you all have a great holiday season, and we'll talk to you soon. Get out there, make some content, and I can't wait to see it.